let's go outside, let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see. A big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi guys and welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Pat Becker and my guest today to start off the show is Vicki Boyer. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. Glad and to you be brought, here. brought your little Welch Corgi. Uh -huh. so cute. This is Catcher, right? Yes, correct. So, you know, the thing that impresses me so much about you, not just for your choice of dogs, but that you know the history of these dogs. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, they're a separate breed from the Pembrokes, which most people are familiar with, but this is actually the original Corgi. And they're more the truest to form of corgi as they were were uh, brought in by the uh, the European early people, and they kind of settled into the Cardiganshire part of Wells, and it was an isolated area, and they kind of stayed this way. There was a few uh, breeds that were inbred into them. One to bring in the Merle coating, another was to bring in the reddish coating. They actually bred into Keelers. But these guys are more in the Dachshund, what they call yes. the Teckle group. You know, this is the thing that I'll interject a thought here, because people talk about purebreds. Yes. There are no purebreds. No. No. You know, this is the thing about it. All of the dogs that we have today mm -hmm. are an infusion of every breed. Correct. You know, which is, makes it remarkable. Yes. Now tell me what, what was the purpose for this dog? Well, she, um, the, the cardigans are used as drovers and an all around family pet for the, the farmers, ranchers, and they lived up in the very high country so they had to be able to handle the rocky hillside so they were bred low to the ground and they can be very agile on those type of surfaces. Um, they nip the cattle in the heels to drive them. That's why they're called drovers. And uh, they also used them to hunt rabbits and to rodents. Yes. And they used uh, to make a game of it, as yes, a matter of fact, with yes. the rabbit thing, because they were great drovers. So you yes. said great prey drive, and you know that oh, yes. was wonderful. Yeah. Well, we Definitely. have made Catcher the dog of the week. Well, thank you. She and, really appreciates it. Oh well, I think that she will like some of the things in here. She was over sniffing them a little while ago. <laughs> She's and, um, and corgis. Uh, let me say, are very food motivated. <laughs> I think you can bribe any breed. That is for sure, but corgis especially. And this is a $100 gift certificate well, to A1 you. Pet Emporium. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, I've and, been there uh, before. It's a very nice store. Yeah. What? What? Oh. Says, Pat, are you trying to fool me? <laughs> she said, yes. Anyway, there are some toys in here for her and some treats. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for bringing well, Catcher in. Well, thank you in, for you know. inviting us. Uh, she really likes to show, but she really loves to play. And she's an agility dog. Yes, she is. That's, mm -hmm. that's remarkable and with Twister Agility. Yes. So this is a, a wonderful, wonderful breed of dog, by the way, folks. They get along with most dogs. They get mm -hmm. along with families. It's kids. They're really, really yes, good. they are. Thanks so much, Vicki, well, for coming in. thank you for inviting in. me. I really enjoyed enjoy being here. <laughs> I enjoy having you. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. All right, welcome back to Dog Talk. I'm sitting here with Michelle Schaefer. She is the diva of insurance in downtown Edmond. For been there for 20, 20 years. years. That's right, yes. a farmer's insurance agent. And then we remember Boo Doo, who uh, came on with Callie. And um, Callie has, is here with us because of pet insurance. And we'll talk with Boo here in just a little bit. Thanks for joining me, both of you. Yes. Um, Michelle, I wanted to talk with you a little bit about uh, specifically the policies that you have at your uh, with farmers insurance yes. um, tell us about pet insurance if someone comes to you and says I want pet insurance for my dog what what's the process okay well it's an easy online application okay and a That's variety of, of premiums to fit whatever your needs are um, the beauty of this is it's a it's a reimbursement plan so the okay. vets like it so it's easy to do you can um, have a very comprehensive plan that covers illnesses and accidents and everything or you can have just an accident only plan that if your your dog goes outside and gets bit by a snake or hit by a car or right. eats something and requires surgery would cover that 
And I really like the, um, the accident uh, plan you talked about because, you know, people think, um, you know, I need insurance for vaccinations or something like that. Think about if you're in rural Oklahoma, you know, Boo was talking about this earlier, saw a snake skin uh, when you were walking Cali. Right, well, I thought it was pantyhose. And it was <laughs> a copperhead snake that almost stepped on that. And with that accidental plant, a right. snake bite, you Would know. Would have been covered. That's awesome, right. that's awesome. So uh, I know you said it varies, yeah. but you talked a little bit about a lab. Like, let's say you had a lab and insurance what would you look at and variables would be paying? If, if you had a very comprehensive plan, it could be 30 to $50 a month. Sure. If you just did the accident only plan, it might be 15 to $20 a month. Okay, so I mean, we're, we're talking about if you have this insurance, you know, this, if your dog requires surgery, thousands, thousands of, dollars, of dollars, this is, this is what you need. This plan, right? Because you would you would choose a deductible anywhere from zero to a thousand, and you okay. choose a reimbursement level anywhere from so you get seventy to, pick to that. ninety. You get to pick that, okay. so you can very much make a plan customized to meet whatever your monthly budget is. Okay, so if you've heard this right now, and a viewer says, "Okay, how do I get a hold of Michelle because I want insurance for my dog?" How do they find you? My number is three four zero four nine nine eight. I'm in downtown Edmond. I am the insurance diva of downtown Edmond. <laughs> and you can find me on Facebook too. Wonderful, and thank you so much, Michelle. And the reason we brought Boo back is because we wanted to reiterate what Callie went through and insurance kind of you know saved Callie's life and you know kept the, everything in shape for your house as well. Yes. Tell us a little bit about Callie's experience with insurance. Right. Well we got insurance 10 months after we uh, adopted her and the coverage of the insurance uh, for her systemic lupus episode was $5,300. Wow. So that pretty much covers the insurance for 13 years, just that payment alone. And uh, that was only the first year. The second year, coverage so far is 1,300. Wow. At this point, she, she continues uh, to have labs on a monthly or bi-monthly basis just to ensure that the lupus is not coming back. And, and you know, that's what we're talking about here. It's, it's not the $5 here you, you get for a vaccination or, you know, they stub their toe or anything like that. This is, this is huge. You know, you found out your dog yeah, had a cat sickness. It's catastrophic, right? That would really... Right, and it's unexpected. You do everything right. you can to prevent anything from happening, and sometimes unexpected things happen, and that's where the insurance will kick in, and we're very glad we have the insurance. That's right, and, you know, for those of you at home, um, you know, Boo was telling me that, you know, you had someone that you spoke with recently that was kind of, you know, laughed it off. And, and... Right, and then two weeks later, his dog got sick, took him into the vet and has Addison's disease. So he yeah. ended up paying thousands of it, dollars. I know it's, I know at home you might think it seems silly, 10, 15, 20 dollars a month for your dog, but as your dogs get older, and just like humans, maybe they're not even old. Callie's three, and, and something comes across. This can save your dog's life. And, you know, the big issue that I wanted to hit on is a lot of people come to a decision where, uh, you know, your dog's requiring surgery, and you can't afford it. And that decision is, well, I'm going to have to put my dog down. If you get this insurance... You're not facing that decision. Right. You're, you're not, not putting a dollar amount on yes. your dog. You're not worried about providing the best care. Can you describe to us, uh, to our viewers, that feeling when you went in there and you had insurance and you found out, and I know you said you went through quotes and everything, that you, know, you were going to be able to keep Callie alive and go through treatment because of the insurance? Oh, it was relieving uh, when we came in and we got the initial quote for her six-day ICU quote uh, stay. It was about... 1500 but that would escalate, and they said, we may need to do a bone marrow biopsy and additional work. And I said, no problem, do whatever is necessary to save her life, and they did. I had no concerns because of having pet insurance. Folks, it is, it is such an important idea that we're trying to get out there that it's, you know, it's not just for you think, well, I can't afford that, it's for the rich. Everybody can have pet insurance. You can save your dog's life. We talked about accidental, you know, your dog runs off the leash or, you know, your dog should be on the leash, but your dog gets away and gets hit by a car. Right. That's covered in the That's accidental plan. That's absolutely covered, right. Okay, so one more time, if you're saying, I want, you know, I want insurance, I want to contact Michelle Schaefer, the diva of insurance, okay. where do we go? 340-4998 or come see me in downtown Edmond. All right, thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you, Boo, for coming back in. We really appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break, 
and we'll be right back with a very special guest. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. We here at Dog Talk have been doing a series about the administrators of some of the largest rescues around, their success and their lifestyle. And today, we're talking with Sue Della Maddalena. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And of course, you are from Central Oklahoma Humane, mm -hmm. uh, one of the larger, more successful rescues in our state. You do such a fantastic job. And we congratulate you for all your efforts and we wanted to see what you were like and what your thoughts were when we interviewed you at your home. So I understand too that you have an event coming up? We do. We have our third annual Hero Awards event. It will be on September 24th at the Oklahoma City Golf and Country Club and it's a wonderful event where we feature three animals who have done extraordinary things and all of them have been adopted from OK Humane. Oh, that's a, that's a wonderful and of course fundraising is one of the foundation reasons that we have to get busy and get high behind. Really? But we went out to your house and we took a video of you, your lifestyle, your animals and it was so much fun. Would you like to see that? Absolutely. Okay. Della Madalena, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You know, it is so incredible since you have come to our state, the wonderful things that you have done with Central Oklahoma Humane, the whole uh, issues of dogs, you know, being lost, um, finding homes, the spay and neuter, everything that you all have been involved in. So I'm, I'm on a, a mission here to find out all about you. <laughs> so tell me, you have some uh, relatives like from Argentina. Mm -hmm. So was, tell me about that. I was born in Argentina and uh, we actually came here. My mother's from Ireland and uh, we came here uh, when I was four years old. And so I do speak Spanish almost, almost fluently. And uh, we, I think our family is very culturally Latin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and uh, there, there is such a, a warmth in this kind of, uh, as you say, you know, DNA, uh, that it just, you exude it, you know. And I think this is part of your success in, in uh, being able to deal with people as well as the animal issues, mm -hmm. which is so important. So you have come initially from what, California? I actually, yes, I, um, I got my uh, graduate degree in Arizona at uh, the Thunderbird School of International Management and then uh, went to Chicago for three years and then was in Los Angeles for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then after that, went to Phoenix and was in Phoenix for almost 20 years. So came here from Phoenix. Yeah. And you were, I guess, involved with the PetSmart organization. And what did you do there? I ran PetSmart's foundation, PetSmart Charities, for 10 years, and basically our job was to raise money through mostly the PetSmart stores and then grant that um, d those dollars out to animal welfare organizations across the U.S. and also Canada. We had stores in Canada as mm -hmm. well. So tell me now with Central Oklahoma Humane, where is it going? Where do you see it going? Well, we really have, our goal is to be able to get to a point where we're, we, we can find homes for all of the placeable pets in our community. And we've really made a lot of great progress. You know, all, we're not a very old organization. We'll be nine years old at the end of this year. And uh, when we first, we have kind of a unique situation where we work very closely with our city animal shelter. We take most of our dogs and cats from them. And, you know, our goal is to be able to get to a point where we're placing 85 to 90 percent of what's coming into the city shelter and we're getting close we actually just got our first quarter numbers and we were really excited to see that we were over 80 percent wow that is fantastic and it is progress and i'm so grateful to all of you who 
run these organizations, the rescues and the shelters. I am, you know, concerned with our rural areas. Yeah. And they, it becomes something of a stigma for us because statistically, most of, a lot of our dogs, especially from rural areas, are transported from our state to another state. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask yourself, what are they doing that we're not doing? Yeah. You know, and I think that what, what you have accomplished here will send us a little further along that line. Yeah. Well, we're still at a point where we have more dogs than we have homes for here. And so particularly in Oklahoma, it's interesting, there aren't a lot of resources out there in the rural areas. And so, um, you know, they are taking in dogs and cats and they really don't have many adopters for them. So relocating is um, in the short term, a good solution because there are shelters around the country who are happy to take our Oklahoma dogs and they find homes for them. But really what we need to do in Oklahoma City and across the state is really focus on the preventive side, which is to spay and neuter the heck out of everything. And then um, as we have the animals in the shelter to do our best to find homes for mm -hmm. them. And of course, the basic issues dealing with dogs, you have to deal with the people who mm -hmm. own them. And I am thoroughly convinced that education is the way to do it. How do you think we could facilitate that? How are we doing on that? We're actually starting to work on the people side of the equation. I always say we don't have an animal problem, we have a people problem. Everyone says we that. We really have to get to the, you know, the root of the problem. And we have started a program called Pets for Life where we're working in two zip codes and we're working very closely with the residents there, knocking on doors, developing relationships. Um, you know, giving them free spay and neuter for their pets, and then also looking at what other resources they need, food, um, dog houses, you know, repairs of fences, uh, because we're really trying to do everything we can to help keep those animals in the home, and then at the same time educate them about responsible pet ownership and, you know, what they can, what they can be doing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, of course, is the key, mm -hmm. you know. Don't you think that it is really very, very necessary to seek a trainer and to get the dog trained with the person. Mm -hmm. And the person then what has to be consistent with that training. Yeah. Do you believe this also? Yeah, we see most of the dogs that come back to us. At, um, our dogs, we have a, we ask that people bring them back to us if they can't keep them or need to return them. And what we see is, you know, dogs that were adopted as puppies, they were put out in the backyard or, you know, didn't have a lot of work done with them. And then they come back at a year and a half and they have horrible manners and yeah, the things that could have easily been solved with training. Yeah, it is the impulse to look for that cute little dog that mm -hmm. just looks up at you and says, take yeah. me home. And um, I think a lot of, of, of us make mistakes that way in that we don't first research what kind of breed would be best for our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What kind of breed would be best for our family, our group? How would we best, you know, help the little animal, this little precious dog or cat, you know, to be happy, mm -hmm. you know, to enjoy a really good life? Um, so what would you say to people as far as that goes? We actually, uh, our pet adoption specialists really try to have a conversation with anyone who comes into the adoption center looking for a dog or a cat. And really, we, let, we try to talk to them about their lifestyle and what they're looking for and their expectations. We actually have a program uh, called Meet Your Match that we do on dogs older than six months old. And we can actually color code those dogs based on their personalities. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk to the people and we can actually color code them as well. And so, for example, if you are not very active, um, and you just want a lap dog, um, we, you, we might match you with a couch potato, which would be a, a purple uh, dog who would just, he likes uh -huh. to hang out, you know, likes to just sit on your lap, whatever. And so we really do try um, at, to the best of our ability to understand what people are looking for and to also when people take puppies to really give them a good idea of what they're up against, you mm -hmm. know, because they can be challenging expect, when they're young. Exactly. Yeah. And so that they don't then bring them back because it was too much for them. And yeah. so the, the closer we can get to matching that dog, you know, with the lifestyle of the individ individual or family, the more likely that dog is to stay oh, in the absolutely. household. Absolutely. So then what does the future look like for your facility? Are you going to branch out, expand? Uh, what's 
What are your plans? Yeah, well, our, our next big goal is to actually get a facility. We right now operate out of five individual locations. I always say we have all the pieces of a shelter, but not just in one place. And, um, and that'll enable us to do a lot more. Um, some of the limitations we have right now, um, being foster-based, we don't have behavioral modification programs. We don't have training programs for people when they adopt. Our long-term goal is really to be able to extend our resources around the state and help where we can by going in and do, doing training, by going in and you know helping by taking animals and getting them placed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so many rescues, so many shelters um, go under, as mm -hmm. we say. If they had your knowledge and you know the contacts and everything, it would help so much. Do you ever? advise or counsel any of the rescues? I do, I have actually um, done some. Um, you know, we just, I, I always tell everybody, we have huge hearts and huge passion for what we do, but at the end of the day, we're running a business and we're in the, we're in the business of saving lives. And so we have to be business people. And even when I, coming to OK Humane, um, working with the staff, who I have the best staff in the world, they love to learn, and it's been really fun to teach them how to, you know, develop their own budget and how to look at the financials, because we really have to understand what we're doing so that we can continue to grow and continue to save more lives. Well, it looks to me like that's the, the road you're taking, and mm -hmm. I think I have no doubt and question in my mind that it's going to be just the way you want it. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting us come in and, and view your beautiful home, your beautiful yard, all the animals. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, keep us advised. <laughs> what fun was that? <laughs> was I fun. mean, you know, I just, uh, I'm amazed that you can handle everything and your life is so involved with all of your dogs and everything. You get everything done. Well, ah, it's a big chore. Well, animals are impor an important life of, uh, an important part of a lot of people's lives. Oh, and for me, all of our lives. That's, they're wonderful. They are. They, yeah. It's wonderful to have them to come home to. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Bill Bonadio, we're going to kind of visit him a little. All right. You'll like this one. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. So here we are in the cooking kitchen area with Bill Bonadio. Susanna, this looks like it could be a good meal. Let's, what do you got here, Bill? Well, you know, I've cooked for many different breeds of dogs over the years, and I found that different dogs have different likes for different kinds of foods. Hmm. So the recipe today is specifically designed for, oh, small white boxers, maybe small white terriers, even white setters. But best of all, this recipe goes great with dogs that really get along with horses. Ah. So let me tell you what we've got here. <laughs> that rings a bell here. <laughs> Does that Small white dogs. Yeah. Small white dogs. There you so go. So what we've got is we've got some zucchini, and we've got some white grilled chicken. Now, I grill a lot of chicken beforehand. It makes it a lot easier when you want to whip up something real quick for yourself, whether or not you want to make a chicken salad for yourself, or a little chicken vegetable dish for your little pet. i got some fresh carrots, whole wheat pasta. If your dog has an allergy to gluten, you can always use gluten-free pasta instead. It's made with white rice. Got some apples to make it sweet a little bit. And we're gonna season it today with a little bit of fresh basil out of my garden and a little bit of fresh mint. So let's get started. We're gonna wow. start with our vegetables here and get them going on real quick. And this is the... This is zucchini. That's zucchini. I yeah, love zucchini. Mm -hmm. Really high. And then we're gonna get some carrots. We're gonna do our uncooked vegetables first, of course. Put those going on in there. Now, anybody can do this at home. It's really easy. In fact, in the past, we've had the young girls on the show teaching them how to cook for their dogs, and it's, it's really not rocket science. It's really simple. If it was <laughs> for rocket me, science, it's difficult. I know. <laughs> you can always call me when you need it. That's not uh, a problem. I always do. All right, and, of course, so I eat at Papa Dio's three times a week. That's so right. I, I should have learned by now right, a few put, lessons. Put a little bit of fresh basil in there and a little bit of the mint. 
Oh, that's true. Not just for the dogs, huh? No, that's, that's exactly right. And we a few apples in here. Just sweeten up. Now, a lot of times, if you're cooking different ingredients for your dogs, what you want to do is you want to look at their bowl after they're done. A lot of times, dogs will push away what they don't like. So the next time you make the recipe, just omit that. And that way, they'll eat all of the things that they like, rather than you giving them things that they may or may not like. Good tip. And, well, unless you're actually a dog talker and can talk to them, <laughs> you can't, they can't tell you what they like and don't like. So it's kind of an experimental feel. Yeah. Also, your dog is obviously going to react to different types of food other than dog food in different ways. So you have to keep an eye on them. You know, they may not, um, their stomach may not agree with some things. But the, the secret is to eliminate any type of salt and sodium products and any type of spices and vegetables that, mm -hmm. that they just don't get along with. And if you're not sure what they like or what they don't like or what they can have and not have, uh, Pat was nice enough to make a really nice brochure that you can get at the restaurant that tells you all about the good vegetables and the not good vegetables and food products that your dog can have. <laughs> so we're right down now to right to the end. Now, of course, Pat, if you want, you know, you can always make some of this for your dog, then have a little extra and just add a little papadillo sauce to it. Oh, I and see. And have dinner with <laughs> your dog. Then you could eat it yourself. Yeah, because you've got, so, you got your pasta in here. So. With as much as there is there, you just carve out a little bit for the dogs, and then you put it on your plate and season it how you want with a little extra. I like garlic. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, Actually, dogs like garlic, too. Yeah, in, they in, moderation, like in moderation. Yeah, you have to be careful. With Everything them. is in moderation. You always go very, very light on all your seasonings for your dog because they're going to not be used to new items, especially if they're used to eating even some of the high-quality dog foods that are available today. Boy, that looks terrific. What do you That's think? That's great, yeah. You think your dogs would like that? I know my dogs would like that. <laughs> well, guess what? We have a surprise for you because we're going to give all of this to you, and this is a little thing we got for you to carry it in. Oh, that's wonderful. With ice that's in it already. So you take this home to your dogs, and your dogs tonight will have a fantastic meal. They're and we'll, love that. we'll include all of the ingredients so that they'll all, all I'll put have the extras it. in there for you, so if you want to practice at home. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> and if you have any questions, you can always call me. All right. Oh, Bill, thank right. you so Beautiful. much. Yeah. It is. It is just it is it makes a beautiful plate. The colors are just wonderful, and of course, the dogs will go crazy yes, over this. Will. And of course, anytime you cook something for your dog, it has to cool. Yes. We can always eat something hot, but of course, your dog's palate is a little bit more sensitive um, than ours, so you'll have to go ahead and cool absolutely. it Absolutely. And you can always pre-cook it and go ahead and package it up and always date it. There you it in go. Your fridge. There you and go. And then that way you'll have it ready in case you're on a busy Bill, day. Bill, thank you so much. You're thank you. Yeah. Sue, thank you so much for coming, and we hope your dogs enjoy this. Bill got this all That's together for you. Great. And it's made just for little white terriers and white boxers and <laughs> white crossbreds. Guys, take care. Have a great week. And we'll talk with you next week. about big dogs, uh-huh, talking about little dogs, oh yeah, chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging hole, thing like that.